Today, we're gonna have a look at a bunch of air coolers from Amazon, mostly, uh, that I paid less than $20 each for, which is, uh, it's not a whole lot for a CPU air cooler. So let's see if any of these are actually worth a damn, or if it's basically just a, a box full of e-waste. But before we get into that, it's time for today's video sponsor, Lenovo. Today's video is sponsored by Linode. 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 Linode is a Linux-based web hosting service, which according to G2, is the easiest infrastructure as service provider to use. Linode offers a wide variety of products, including web hosting, game server hosting. They can handle any computational load you throw at them. Linode also offers Kubernetes solutions using K8s with horizontal cluster auto-scaling. Whoa, that sounds very fancy. In other news, Linode Linode also recently upgraded their block storage volumes with NVMe drives, which means you can get a huge speed upgrade at no extra cost. If Linode sounds good to you, use the link in my description below to sign up for a 60-day $100 free credit. Okay, let's meet the contestants. Uh, first off, there seems to be a very clear blue theme amongst all these coolers. It kind of makes me think that at some point somebody did some market research and determined that people are more likely to buy a blue CPU cooler because blue means cool, I guess. <laughs> and let's just do a quick unboxing for all these coolers, starting off with the very plain boxed one because I feel bad for it. It's got, <laughs> it's got pretty loser packaging. Uh, now this is a Zolman CNPS 80G. Now these Zolman CMPS coolers were all the rage back in the day, so I'm curious to see how it holds up on a modern CPU. Ooh, that is a very interesting mounting method they have here because we're essentially missing half of the clips. We're only gonna be able to mount it kind of sideways across on the CPU. Ooh, look at that. This is clearly not a very well-made cooler from Zolman here. Next up, we've got a cooler by PC Cooler, wait, is that really the brand name? Which is rated for 66 watts, which is actually weirdly specific. <laughs> this looks quite a lot like a version of the kind of stock cooler that you get with Athlon CPUs. Wow, that's a... Again, there is the blue that we were talking about earlier. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the whole thing just flexes. But you know, it's not like it needs to be weight bearing, right? So it doesn't really matter. What I noticed with a lot of these cheaper CPU coolers is that it seems like you have to choose a socket. Not many of them support both Intel and AMD. Uh, you kind of have to go with the one that you have. And I guess that's a way to cut down costs in terms of mounting hardware, right? Uh, so next up, let's move over to this deep cool cooler. Oh, this Gamex cooler, we have a nice power Powerful fan. Um, this is the first one with a 120 millimeter fan so far, and uh, it's got a much more solid fin stack than the other two. It, it doesn't feel like it was hewn out of a Pepsi can. Okay, that's a that's a that's a solid feeling fan as well. This feels like a promising cooler actually. This one feels pretty good. Next, we have a cooler from Arctic. It's the Alpine 12 OC which looks very suspiciously like the stock Intel cooler. Nothing else in the box, but that is a pretty hefty feeling cooler, actually. It looks a little bit like an Intel stock cooler that's been using a bunch of horse steroids. You've got a chunkier fin stack and a blacked out fan that looks a little bit more stylish. And then finally, we have another cooler by Deepcool, the Gamax 200T, and it's actually a tower cooler. And apparently, according to the box, it can handle 95 watts of Intel heat and 100 watts of AMD heat. This has a 120 millimeter fan on it. Again, it is the same fan that that other deep cool cooler has on it. The actual fin stack is very flimsy feeling, but it does have reasonable fin density. And it's also got heat pipes, only two of them, but this is the first cooler that resembles just a decent air cooler. Now that we've met all our contestants, I think it's time to place our bets in the comment section below, which one we think's the alpha loser in this pack, because I think it's pretty obvious which one's gonna win. 
Now for today's tests, I'm not going to use a high-end CPU like an 11900K, because I think it would be pretty stupid of me to go, oh, this sub $20 cooler can't handle a $500 CPU, what garbage. So instead, I'm going to use an i5-10400F, which I've actually overvolted slightly to 1.3 volts so that it draws a consistent 65 watts throughout the IDA64 runs. And then I'm also going to do some gaming tests using Battlefield 5 because it's one of the games that I use that has the highest average CPU utilization. So it's kind of like a, like a worst case gaming scenario for a CPU cooler. Oh, and in terms of thermal paste, I did use Thermal Grizzly for all of the tests. I did try and use a consistent amount of thermal paste for each cooler. Yes, I know, very professional. So with that, let's have a look at the coolers and how they performed. Now we're going to start off the tests with the PC Cooler Cooler, uh, which had some pretty interesting mounting issues. I did run into a problem with the motherboard that I'm using, which is an NZXT Z590 board. The mounting bracket was wedged right up against the motherboard's VRM heatsink, which meant that the clip just refused to hook in place. Uh, so I actually ended up having to remove the little pins that secure the mounting bracket in place, hook the cooler into place, and then actually mount it down. Uh, so that was a bit of a pain in the butt, uh, but I did eventually get it mounted. Now in terms of temperatures, the cooler struggled a bit. Uh, we were getting 83 degrees Celsius after 10 minutes of IDA64, which isn't great considering the 19 degrees Celsius ambient temperature. Uh, we actually got the same 83 degrees Celsius with Battlefield 5. Although, bear in mind, despite the fact that the little cooler was struggling its heart out, it was still nice and quiet. Now moving over to the Zolman CNPS 80G, which is a very small, lightweight, not very well made feeling cooler, uh, but once it's mounted it feels pretty secure despite just having the two clips. Now in terms of IDA64 temperatures, it got 70 degrees Celsius, which is 13 degrees Celsius lower than the PC Cooler Cooler, which is a very good showing actually. Um, and in Battlefield 5, we got 72 degrees Celsius, which is also way better than the temperatures we got with the PC Cooler cooler, uh, which I'm pretty impressed with. And in terms of noise, it's, it's actually pretty good as well. Next up, we're having a look at the Deep Cool Gamma Archer with its 120 millimeter fan. Now, in terms of mounting hardware, it is very similar to the PC Cooler Cooler's mounting hardware, uh, except for the fact that it's much more of a pain in the ass to actually remove the mounting bracket once you're done with the cooler. Now, for some reason, the, the little pins that secure the stock Intel clips in place just refuse to budge when you try and remove them. Uh, I, I, it's so difficult to get out. Eventually, the way that I got them out was by taking a screwdriver, wedging it under the pin, and then just like smacking it out. But other than that, in terms of temperatures, with IDA64, we got 67 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit better than that Zolman cooler, uh, which, yeah, it's, it's pretty good, actually. At this point, the temperatures are acceptable for a CPU like the 10400F, in my opinion. I think this is a reasonable showing. Uh, in terms of Battlefield 5, it was a little bit worse. It got 68C to 71C. There was definitely a fluctuation there, but it did seem to average a higher core frequency while gaming. So that's something to take note of. And then in terms of noise, it sounded like this. The Intel stock cooler that Arctic fed horse steroids is next. It also uses the same mounting clips as the stock cooler that are pretty easy sometimes and sometimes they just refuse to line up and work properly. I guess it depends on the mood of the clip at the moment when you're using it. Uh, but once you have it mounted, the temperatures were pretty good. It was even better than the Deep Cool Gamma Archer, giving us 63 degrees Celsius with IDA64 and a variation between 64 and 67 degrees while gaming uh, with battery. Battlefield 5. So yeah, that's a surprisingly good showing, although it was running a little bit more noisy than the other coolers during this test. And then finally, we have the Deepcool 200T, which is the only tower cooler in this test. And it's actually not going to be the final cooler because we have a surprise guest appearance after this, which we'll have to wait for to see what that is. Uh, but yeah, the 200T has the exact same mounting hardware as the Gamma Archer, which is relatively easy to initially get into place, but it's again impossible to remove once it's on there. In fact, I actually broke the top bit off of one of 
of the pins trying to remove it. Uh, so I eventually had to use a screwdriver to push the pin out through the bottom of the motherboard. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's just unnecessarily difficult to remove that mounting hardware. But anyways, in terms of temperatures, it got 54 degrees Celsius while running Ida 64, which is significantly better than any of the other coolers. In fact, it's 10 degrees cooler, well, nine. It's nine degrees cooler than the next best cooler in this test. So it shows you that that tower design just works well. That's why higher end coolers use it. Uh, and in terms of Battlefield 5, we're also getting better temperatures. Uh, it was fluctuating between 56C and 61 degrees Celsius. So that is a very good showing from that cooler. And in terms of noise, it was also very quiet. And now the final, final guest appearance cooler in this roundup is the stock cooler that Dell uses on its pre-builds. I thought that I had to use this cooler in this roundup to see how it holds up compared to a bunch of, you know, other $20 coolers. Although I think it probably costs them like $3 to make that cooler. I don't know. Does anybody know what the production costs of one of these little coolers are? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. But anyway, uh, in terms of temperatures, this is actually a massive upset. It got the second best performance on this roundup. In terms of Ida 64, we got 62 degrees Celsius, which is only marginally better than the Arctic cooler, but somehow it performed better than that. And then in terms of gaming, we got temperatures fluctuating between 63 and 67 degrees Celsius. Although, and it's gonna sound like I'm making excuses here, but I do think that the noise result does kind of invalidate the temperatures because that fan is super noisy and they basically just brute force the problem with noise. Uh, so have a listen because it sounds a lot like a leaf blower engine. It's, it's pretty irritating. Uh, but yes, so at the end of the day, the best cooler performance we got was from the tower cooler, which uh, probably all of you guessed when we started the shootout. Although it was also the most expensive, so an honorable mention goes to the other deep cool cooler, the Archer, for having a surprisingly solid performance at 10 US dollars. Oh, and a second honorable mention goes to the Dell cooler for being the most effective scarecrow replacement. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. If you want to help support the channel, go check out the merch store linked in the description below where you can get yourself a high quality noob flask, which is actually really good at keeping things at temperature. You can also get yourself one of these active bottles with graphics cards on it. It, it works very well. Ah, uh, it's by Camelback. <laughs> anyway, with that, thank you very much for watching, and until the next video, bye-bye.